Welcome, everybody, to a brand new series of Rimworld that's been, uh, it's taken a lot of development. It's also been through a lot of different phases based on feedback on Discord, which is where I've basically been building this thing over the past six hours now. So, this time around, we're going to be doing something a bit more simple, but kind of based on some ideas we've had going in the past. I still want to look at some of these tech mods that we've never previously seen, so I kind of wanted to build around that. And I figured, how do we avoid the game becoming super overpowered when you've got a huge amount of resource mods like the quarry, the deep drills, and, and other things added by some of these other crazy endgame mods. I thought there was kind of a simple answer to that. What if we only played with a single colonist? That works, but then there are of course mods like miscellaneous uh, robots that adds miscellaneous my, which obviously allows you to basically build new colonists along with android tiers, which of course we played previously. I didn't want it to be another robot series. So to avoid that entirely, we are going to be focusing on mostly this time around Project Rim Factory, and this was a mod that recently came back out of kind of development limbo. It hadn't been updated for quite a long time, and I think uh, one person took it and basically resurrected for the current version of Rimworld Royalty, that being obviously 1.1. Now, if you're interested in this pack, full mod list will be available in the description, or as much as I can fit in the description, there is a character limit. But to get the ready full mod list, we'll have the credits to all the developers that will be available, obviously, in the Steam Workshop collection I'll link below, along with a load order file to allow you to instantly basically install it, sort the mods in, and get straight into the gameplay. There'll also be a scenario, which is what I'm going to be playing with this time, and of course you guys might want to, uh, might want to put your own take on it, but I've added a few more limitations to emphasize the point of this, which is one man struggling to survive, but, uh, and having the game, uh, I guess a better best way to describe it would be kind of like Factoria, right? Having the game play itself where we are basically playing this one character. We are this character, essentially. Rather than a colony manager, it's a person manager managing this massive factory. I thought that'd be kind of a fun twist on things. So, we are going to be playing with the lowly tinkerer, the lonely tinkerer 2.0, a lonely robo-scientist desperate to be left alone on his greatest project. Seems out seeks out a remote reward free of laws and restrictions to build the greatest and friendliest robots mankind has ever seen. But will life on the reward and its many unexpected dangers force the fearful scientists down a much darker path? I've added, if we feel like it, I have added some war crimes mods. Prison labor is going to be a big part of this. Bear in mind, we are just one person. We do have some basic robots mods. For example, the miscellaneous robots mod of uh, Miss Robots++. Plus Plus. There are some limitations to that. There are some things that we can't build from that mod because I personally consider them massively overpowered, like the Omnibots, but things like Cleaning Bots, Builder Bots, Crafter Bots, which are essentially just animals in-game. They are essentially just animals that can do extra things. Those are fine, but no other colonists is the main thing. Now, to add on to that, I've used the Incidents mod because I tried to set it up in the scenario and it didn't work because there are, turns out, three different mods that add a Wanderer so that where a random person would join your colony. I've removed it from this and I've added it in the Incidents mod. If you're playing along and want to sort of match what I'm doing, I'd recommend you do the same thing. We can't get Wanderers. We can't get Man in Blacks either. As you can see, that Incident disabled Man in Black. So it's just going to be us versus the world. To make up for that, we do have some things to make our lives a little bit easier. We have haulers, sentry guns, a vanometric power cell for the haulers to start off with. We have a thrombo wolf incubator, because of course an animal we're going to need to rescue us if our character does get shot, go down from a disease, whatever. We've got medical bots, but the medical bots can't rescue us. So we're going to have to be very careful and very sensible about how we use a lot of these different mods we've got going. We're going to start with gun turrets, solar panels and batteries, and research, because we only have one person doing it, will be multiplied by 500%. However... Because of a new Empire mod update, that will be maybe not so relevant. It's not just going to be our guys sitting around researching all day, and you'll see why in a moment. The other thing I've added is wave-based survival. 
Now, I was kind of in two minds about this. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go down the wave base survival route this time. But to avoid it just being us building a factory, where, at which point we could just play Factoria, right? We will go on a middling wave based survival playthrough. And if it ends up not being what we want, we can just change Storyteller. That's really not a big deal. So we're going to go on that one. If it ends up being too easy, of course, we can increase it. But I figured that means that we have to focus still. I can't just sit there and research all the best plants, all the best. Uh, all the best sort of luxuries, bionics, whatever. We have to focus on defenses too. That's still going to be a very important part of what we've got going on here. So, I'm thinking we play in plains. I know we play on mountains or we might play on a peninsula. I want a big, nice open plains for us to have enough room to build our factory on. I'm thinking somewhere that's got... Maybe we won't even need all round growing time. If there's only going to be one person, we don't need to exactly stockpile a mountain of food like we've done in previous series. Um... Let's go like, uh, what about someone that gets a decent amount of rainfall too? Seems like this area is not too bad for that. It was one with 2,000. Yeah, that seems fine. Marble, sandstone, granite, temperate forest. Fine. A very basic start point for us that I wouldn't normally play with. And then, of course, I've created our starting character. Robo Daddy. Also, his real name is uh, Geppetto Fingers. Robo Daddy is, is what we're going to refer to him as. No, I specifically picked a backstory. The backstories are kind of irrelevant, but I spe specifically chose one that will remove violent. I was also tempted to remove social, but if we remove social, we can't use the prison labor mod because they need social to be able to do wardening. He does have some other traits to help boost him up. He's only really good at crafting construction. We've got fast learner, great memory, industrious, transhumanist, cannibal, and psychopath. Because I figured a man who's living out on his own with some robots probably wouldn't care much about people and probably wouldn't care about... <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to add cannibal uh, originally, but somebody suggested cannibal and it apparently unlocks a new meditation focus type, which I guess is another fun thing we can look at. Now, for our starting equipment, we do gain... A couple of different robots here. Now, I, I have to re-add some of the robots that got removed. So, I was going to say one gardener robot. Basic gardener robot. Bear in mind, with the robot mod we've got right now, we have multiple tiers. So, if I quickly just craft, uh, scroll down to the gardener. Uh, G-A, somewhere around here. Bear with me. Uh, bear with me. Right. So, there we are. That's what we're supposed to have here. So, we need our base station, build a base station, crafter, and kitchen. Again, Omnibots are going to be cancelled because they are essentially skilled in everything. They have 20 in each skill and are just ridiculously fast. Very, very, very overpowered. So to make up for that, we've only got access to these and we'll only have access to the level 4 equivalents of all of those. So that should give us something to start off with. But bear in mind, that will use up basically all of our Vanimetric power cell. So... I don't know how difficult this is going to be. I played it for a couple of hours just to make sure, obviously, everything was working fine. I like the last mod pack, which, uh, well, I played that for a couple of hours too, but it turns out the difficulty got pretty ridiculous pretty fast. This time around, it's obviously not quite as ridiculous and a bit more focused. So let's see what we've got. I'm excited to try and build a factory. I know we get to start off with some of the factory stuff immediately. So as much automation we can get done as early as possible will allow us to focus on some of the important stuff. Now, one of the reasons I'm starting with 4,000 silver is predominantly so that we can use the Empire mod to... Again, you immediately get hit by a Wanderer, despite the fact I've disabled it fucking everywhere. Hey, uh, get out. Go. <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the things I wanted to do with that is so that we had access to empires one of the new updates in the empires mod actually allows you to set up and you kind of had the ability to do this beforehand but it's been made a lot more streamlined now so you've got things like power production uh medicine production and then research was a thing anyway but now it seems like you can get a bit more dedicated research production we can have teams do it for us and have them answer to robo daddy but just manage robo daddy by himself similarly the militaries from the empires mod are going to come in very very handy if our turrets end up not being enough you know there are things that uh, unfortunately turrets won't deal with like for example sieges that can just sit and shell our base. We can't do anything about that at that stage. Besides, you know, potentially crossbreeding a muffalo and a, and a uh, sorry, a thrombo and a centipede and sending that into battle. There's not much else we can do otherwise. Which is why we have, of course, the uh, the, the wolf, wherever that's gone. My wolf, there it is. Uh, thrombo wolf incubator. Now, on the subject of that as well, the genetics mod, the reason I threw this one, it was kind of last minute, but I realized it's got a massive new update, which adds a whole bunch of really, really cool new stuff. More importantly, it's got some of that mech stuff in it, which is really what we're here to see here. And I figured it's kind of appropriate if Robo Daddy ends up growing a load of mech creatures. Is this a good place for a factory? Yeah, I kind of like it. Um, yeah, I really did kind of like the idea that we started doing last series, but never actually got to finish, and that was a wall around the entire base. If we get enough robots for that, that'd be kind of fun. And then where the road comes through our base, we could leave that open for traders and caravans and things. We're not going to be hostile to everyone this time. We're not going to have. We're not going to be just some crazy psychopath robot daddy. We need customers at the end of the day for the things we end up producing. We might want to trade with the Empire. We might want to trade with the Blue Moon Corporation and people like that. Anyway, let's get to work. So I think the first thing I probably want to do is mess around with the schedule a little bit, make sure we're min-maxing. 
the important starting things. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these. We've also got what the heck as well, because that, that I figured if we could take centipedes and use them to defend our base is really, really on brand. We've never had an opportunity to really use it before in previous series as well. So that I thought would be, would be kind of fun to see. Let's get rid of all of this crap, because none of this is useful to start off with. Oh, I also need to rebalance the audio because I reset the game. Hang on a sec. Just to make sure this series would run smoothly on the last one, I did a full reset on all of our mods. A lot of them I've left to default settings as the mod makers intended. Things like the quarry mod, for example. Normally, I tweak that around a little bit. But this is just as the mod is uploaded and as it's ready to go. So, if anything's wrong with it, you can't, you can't blame me this time. Right, so construction will go up to priority two. Repair, deconstruct, will leave lower. We have a construction bot, don't we? I was going to say we can leave the construction bot to deal with the deconstruction. Yeah, I think that's a safer play. Now, these robots, the cool thing about this robot mod in particular is their tiers have skills. So the base construction bot, I think, has like five construction. Next one above that has 10. Next one above that, 15. Next one above that, 18 or something like that. So you've got an incentive to upgrade them, especially things like the crafter bots. It'll, it'll help things out massively. So the crafter bots are really just coming around to build the machines and manage the machines. And then the machine is going to do most of the production. Because it seems a bit weird to have a bunch of hauling bots crafting all of our crap, right? Anyway, um, harvest growing will put it a little bit, a little bit higher. We won't worry about mining, dr drilling, quarrying, plant cutting. I guess we'll have just to build our first base. Everything else, for the time being, I'm just going to completely remove points from unless it's super essential stuff. Like, for, obviously, to deliver, we might... Oh, sorry, to haul and clean. Might want well to leave some points in that in case of emergencies. What do we need to do, then? What is the difficulty of playing a character who can't do combat? Immediately, I think we need to get some turrets down. Because there is a small possibility right now the game might say, boom, mad boomalope, for example. Or, boom, mad mega sloth. Um, right, straight off the bat. So, I think setting down the turrets before we even get the machines done wouldn't hurt. We kind of want to pick positions as well that would really fit the map. I think if we put one there to cover that whole entrance zone... I mean, we've got the natural barrier there, there, and there. So I think putting one down is is pretty good. And then if we're going to build in this zone, mainly because there's all these fertile fields here, putting a base down here wouldn't hurt. So I think we put a another turret to cover those two entrances. Let's put it there so the enemies can't just strafe past it. We'll, we'll tear this building down. We'll get the robots to tear this building down. And then for our final turret, where, wherever it is, there we are, we'll put it over in this direction. This one's obviously not going to be as good to defend things, just to kind of control our enemies a bit more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll let him get that down immediately. Bolt goes straight, up, straight away. Wow, that was uh, kind of unexpected. Right, there we are. Perfect. Let's get our Vinometric Power Cell down and then immediately get down our robots. We might want to focus some robots rather than others. I don't remember the power drain on this mod. Last time I tested this mod pack was with the other craftable robots, it's called, rather than Robots++. Plus Plus. They both do similar things, but this one actually gives us access to a medical box. I was really struggling to think, you know, what do we do if our guy gets... A surgery need you know what if we do happen to get some really cool architect gear what happens if we end up getting malaria to the extent that he can no longer tend to himself we need a robot to back us up on that my choice is really to kind of add the androids mod but again kind of leaves it to the issue of well we can craft a bunch more other androids that way or add this mod which actually adds dedicated er bots wherever it's wherever it's gone anyway let's activate them all and set down a, a stockpile zone to start off with make our lives a little bit easier to manage Right, let's do something like that. Then our robot should immediately get to work there. There we are. There's our... Oh, that's our builder bot. Um, which one's our ER bot then? Oh, that one there with the white top to it. And then, of course, as we upgrade them, they'll have different designs to make it a little bit, a little bit easier to tell apart. Right, Robo Daddy. I'm thinking it's time to build some structures. Why don't we take this apart? See if we can build a little bit of a steel building to start off with. Bear in mind, we do have the mod that prevents steel from burning because that just makes... No, that just makes sense. That was a little bit close then. My God. This one, this one's also steel, right? Ah, oh, good. Okay. Let's get this one taken down as well then. Meditating at a time like this, when you're out in the rain, your robots are out in the rain as well. Hopefully these robots can't short circuit in hindsight. That would suck. Um, I was going to say, obviously we can't change that in hindsight, can we? Right. So let's go to his schedule. Let's just give him nothing but work until the base is set up. We'll, we'll make him work until he has to go on mental break if it's necessary. Uh, but I want to make sure we've got uh, some base to work with here. Why is he so fast? I mean, it's probably something to do with the fact we're playing on Speed 4, obviously, that's uh, making things a lot faster. Uh, what is your manipulation? Default. A regular manipulation, huh? You're just extremely fast at... Uh, let's take a look. Deconstruction. Ah, his traits, of course. He's got uh, Industrious. So he gets a 35% work speed bonus. But that's his only bonus right now. Other than that, he's just a regular squishy human being with no combat abilities at all. So I think that's a fair trade-off. Okay, let's see if we can use enough steel now to put down our basic structure. 
What are we looking at here? Maybe maybe I should get the robots included as well, just in case they short circuit. But I don't want to cover up this growing zone. Um, we'll put down something like this. Now the other mod had a. The other mod had garden bots, which would have been really, really useful, but unfortunately we don't have those right now, so we're going to have to get Robo Daddy to do that. I don't know if there's a way to automate it later on with the Rim Industry mod. I think it's called Rim Industry, but if it's not, you missed out on something incredible. It's Project, project Industry or something like that. Um, wow, we can already build a blast furnace, huh? An early furnace made to burn unwanted things to smelt raw resources into useful materials, also capable of burning stones into bricks. I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that one's very sound, but that's quite cool that we've already got access to a blast furnace as well. Things they're massive too. Wow. That's going to be something I never considered before is the amount of space that we're going to need for this base is ridiculous. Maybe this is the like the perfect series to be able to do a massive wall around the base with. And then let's quickly get down a... I'll put the bedroom in kind of a corner this time around rather than the middle of the room that I normally do. So do something small like that. Um, it's not going to be the world's biggest bedroom. I don't think we really need to be the world's biggest bedroom right now. And then we'll have room for a bathroom. So if we do our little ensuite there, uh, let's go for, where am I, <laughs> I completely the wrong area, I'm like, where are the doors, why, why are the doors not in furniture anymore, hmm, I wonder, I love that there's an antimatter section and a radiology, that fills me with great hope for this series, we've also got Glitternet, now I figured Glitternet would be a really cool addition, because it hooks up to workbenches, now I don't know if it will be compatible with the factory mod, but I figured it was worth a go, right? Because if they work together, that's going to be awesome that we've got this massive robot-powered factory, multiple different mods working in tandem. We've got robots maintaining machines that are creating items for Robo Daddy. Now, one of my big end-game goals, one of the mods we've got enabled adds nuclear warheads. I think it'd be awesome if we ended up being a nuclear warhead arms dealer. Uh, imagine it now, a massive factory at the top of the map, growing the resources it needs, mining the resources it needs with, with core drills, whatever, producing automatically nuclear warheads rapidly. That would be such a cool thing to succeed with this series. That's also why I'm playing on a slightly lower difficulty, because we have just a really dumb, ridiculous goal this time around. It's not like the anime mod pack or whatever that was kind of survive or build a ship or anything. We just want to do something absolutely nuts. Oh, what's a nice bed? A beautiful bed. Uh, added by... I'm not, sure, <laughs> I'm not sure how much I trust that. Added by bondage bed torture. A beautiful bed. 30 beauty. Uh, why is it such a beautiful bed? This is one beauty. Um, okay, I'll trust you. Oh, you have to build it out of silver, gold, or steel. Is it not less comfortable, though, because it's made of steel? Rest effectiveness, where is that? Uh, rest effectiveness, 110%. Oh, wow. Normally, if you build a bed out of it, it loses a little bit of, uh, rest effectiveness, right? Or maybe that's just stone, I don't remember. Um, I guess we'll build one of those. It's only 80 steel, right? And what about the nice bed? Does that give it more beauty because it's bigger? 50 beauty. Well, okay. Uh, let me go ahead and swap over to that one then. That sounds a lot better. I just feel like with a mod name, Bondage Bed Torture, I'm not entirely sure whether or not he's just going to get straight into bed and then be electrocuted. I feel like this could be a bad idea in hindsight. Oh, our Thrombo Wolf hatched. So one of the cool things that Genetic Rim has added recently is a full graphics update that really makes the animals look like their base Rimward animals. I always found it a bit weird, say things like, um, when we played it last time, there were obviously things like the Paragon Boomalope, which looked... Nothing at all like a boom life. It had similarities, sure. The color scheme and everything was different. I think that's really what they've tried to do with this new pack is match it into base game remod quite nicely. And they've really definitely have achieved that. It looks so much better than it used to. Not that it even looked bad in the first place, but it does look very, very cool. Transhumanist frustrated. Right, so should have really considered that. Huh? I want to make him a transhumanist that we're not going to be able to deal with that for a very, very, very long time. I don't know if this ER bot is capable of doing operations in its current state. Anyway, let's get our robots installed in the building. I won't call it a house because I feel like I feel like there's not much to it right now. A potentially torturous bed and some steel walls does not a house make. All right, let's get all these installed as soon as possible. Just in case of, you know, you never know when a raider will turn up or our guy will go on a tantrum and try and smash them or something weird like that. Um, speaking of which, I should probably let him have a day off now, right? He's done a pretty good job. Why don't we go to... Uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. Why don't we go to the schedule mod and just set it to anything? Just go full blood schedule mod. That would, be a bit of a, that would be a bit of an important mod to leave out. Let's just set him to do absolutely anything right now. It's a real shame we don't have any garden bots, but it's not super relevant right now. What this was was essentially the Rich Explorer start, but with some alterations to it. Like, for example, more steel, because we're immediately, right now, going to throw it on something new. Have they added... Oh, there's no new faction icon. That makes some sense, though. It doesn't, it's not exactly the most important thing, is it? Faction name. Um, we're going to call it Robo... In friendly, friendly Robo Corporation. And behind the scenes, it's a bunch of tortured prisoners mining all day to feed a nuclear warhead factory. Incredible. 
Uh, faction title. Bastion of Hope couldn't be the any more the opposite. Um, faction title. Oh, maybe we should have that as friendly. And then we're, of course, called the Robo Corporation. Confirm changes. Now, there is, of course, something I can't do this series, and that's offer you guys names to give characters, because we're not going to have any. Doesn't mean we can't give names to the horrible crossbreed mechanoid animals. Can't, doesn't mean that we can't rename a centipede. A centipede, for example, called Bobbit might be highly appealing. I mean, it is highly appealing. I don't know if that's really left up to question. Anyway, let's work on this to start off with, but that will come much further in the future. Steel toilet. I just feel like there's something... I, I feel like a wooden toilet is war crimes. That's something we'll give to our prisoners. But now that I think about it, if we're going to have our prisoners working for us in the mines, war crimes might not be what we need. Because maybe if they're injured or, or not happy about the fact that we've got giving them splinters in their ass, maybe they'd be pretty annoyed at us and just wouldn't work in the first place. I hope I don't have to keep them happy, otherwise that would suck. And then we'll go regular old boring wooden floors. At least, obviously, like I've said, steel doesn't burn in this mod pack. So we've got that going for us, which is quite nice. It's our construction mod. Hey, get to work. Yeah, it's not the fastest thing in the world. I hate to say it. It's still pretty decent. You know, obviously for... For a little starting build about there. Really suck if we lost any of these guys as well, which is why they are maybe a little bit more important than I'm giving them credit for. What's Robo Daddy doing? Standing in the corner sadly. That's a bit it's a bit creepy. Okay, so the basic everything is set up. We need water as soon as possible. That's the only other thing we need right now to keep our guy alive and happy. I'm surprised he hasn't actually died of dehydration right now, right? Uh Special Interior, decent bedroom mate without a table. Did he drink when I wasn't even looking? He does have a thirst need. Uh, yeah, he absolutely does. Okay, well, let's quickly get down, then, a water well before that becomes a bigger issue. Um, what am I looking for here? We need a water tower. We're just going to drop one of those anywhere. We need a water pump. We'll go ahead and drop one of those in... Oh, God, where does it not cover up the tower? I assume there. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and move that. Let's just let's just be, be safe about things. Put it indoors. Yeah, you know what? Let's put it indoors, just in case raiders do turn up and start smashing our things. The wind pump there, I'll cover that with some crops or something like that to help open it up. And then we want a... Uh, we want a water well. Oh, God, that was unlucky. I didn't quite build... Should have really checked that before I started. Um, if we put it there, we can at least pump water from nearby. And that's everything we need. So we'll just get our plumbing down something like this. Now, we don't have any sewage quite yet, but I do want to get latrine... Not latrine, sorry. Septic tanks down so that we can start fertilizing our crops as soon as possible. Obviously, we're building this area. It won't matter too much anyway. Whoa! Is that all rich soil? Wow! Holy shit, look at that! Man, I'm really happy that we happened to just build near the area that had all of this stuff going for us. Wow! Um, I was going to say we'll, um, we'll, we'll put some of it down. I don't want to turn all of it into rice, because I think that would just be an abundance of rice that we're never really going to use. Let's do something like... Something like that to start off with. And we'll take it down to that layer. Why not? And then this one will turn into corn. Maybe something to get us through the winter. Just in case our guys... You never know. Take an ill during the winter. We might starve to death. So... Damn it. So we go for our usual short-term crop, long-term crop. So corn there. Let's throw in some rice there. And then with these smaller areas down here, we'll put things like heel root. Uh, coffee probably wouldn't hurt as well. Bear in mind, it's one guy versus the world. So he's probably going to need some coffee here. All right, let's go for... Oh, you shit. Rimworld and its growing zones. My, they, they are my mortal enemy. If I had to describe a mortal enemy, it would be Rimworld zones. Okay. Uh, what have we got then? Coffee. Psychite tea. I feel like we don't want to drive him too mad pretty early on. He's already got enough on his plate. Let's go for a coffee plant then. Oh yeah, it's quite fun. Oh, Robo Daddy. You will be our savior. Our nuclear savior. My god, you're a frightening man. Stood there, staring, unblinking. That's the first time he's blinked in about 40 minutes. What's he doing? It says he's praying, but then it also says he doesn't have anything to do. Uh, what if we draft and undraft him? There we are. I think he was just stuck in a... Stop praying. Doesn't that just happen to you sometimes? Just get trapped in your cold, dark bedroom. What you... Oh, you shit robot. <sighs> you're getting upgraded. No, you know what? You're getting replaced as soon as possible. For any sort of sewage, we're going to have to do just a regular sewage outlet right now, unfortunately. It's not going to be particularly pretty either. Um, sure, let's just hook the toilet directly to, <laughs> directly up to an outlet. That's fine. Just try not to... Just just wipe your shoes on the door out on the way in, huh? And let's put down a growing zone around the wind turbine. We'll put something like heel root or cloth around this one. Um, I guess cotton would make more sense to start off with. We'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and stick that down like that. Perfect. And then a little bit more heel root couldn't hurt. So we'll go... Or some heel root in the first place definitely couldn't hurt. Just in the case of emergencies. I'm pretty sure we started with some glitter world medicine. But I can't imagine that's going to last a huge amount of time. Right, here we go. Do something like that just to kind of finish things off. Perfect. As for storage, we've got a pretty crazy amount of stuff. So metal shelf. What does that allow us to put anything on it? Uh, maximum number per cell. 40 cell, 20 per cell. 
Uh, I spend a number of stacks and go into a single space. Oh, um, I've not used simply storage before. I've only ever used uh, deep storage. So this is going to be a case of basically learning how it works. Hey, we're never going to learn. Let's just, let's just put it down. Let's just put it down and see how it goes. I assume it just works like a bigger regular shelf, right? Uh, critical, allow all. Actually, let's do him. Let's do preferred. I always do that just as a kind of force of habit. Right, no rotten, no fresh, no food, no corpses. We'll allow waste and nuclear waste. I don't think it's really going to be too much of an issue. Oh, definitely no chunks either. And then on this one, we'll allow food, raw resources, that type of thing. There we are. Oh, right, we've got to build a trade beacon because we're on wave based survival. 3.2 days? 3.2 days? <laughs> oh, this could be a concern. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and set that to low priority. Are they going to... You gonna haul some? Hey, you wanna? You guys wanna haul some stuff over? Okay, that works. That's that's quite good actually. On this one, we want to allow fresh foods. Uh, raw resources are fine. That should just be plant. Oh, let's go ahead and just allow plant matter then. Um, we want to add. Can we put corpses on the small shelf? That'd be a bit strange, but I'll give it a go, I guess. Um, I was gonna say no human-like corpses, but our guys are cannibal. So you know what? That's fine by me. Um, I pretty paragon drone. That seems fine. Yeah, that's okay. And then, no waste, no nuclear waste. Maybe if we're just doing it for food, I should take away mechanoids, hybrid, paragon, drone, and insects. And then add back mechanoids uh, and drones on this one. Actually, I think we can eat paragon corpses and hybrids too. What are we going to name our doggo? Because I'm sure many people are very, very interested to know what we've got for this one. Our Thrumwolf pup. Um, that's a hard choice. Maybe I'll, You know what? Comment section. Take it away. You, you know the drill by now. I have no names for this Thrumbo pup, so you can vote on what we call our friendly doggo. Our doggo is going to be the only thing I think that we've got that can rescue us. For right now, I'm just going to go back to calling him Thrumwolf. Uh, we'll go ahead and train him in absolutely everything as soon as possible, because he's going to be our guy's only friend here. They're going to be they're going to be best friends till the end, and if anything happens to this dog, we'll restart. <laughs> to be honest, right? Let's go ahead and set a sleep schedule that's somewhat decent here, um, and let's go now recreation. I talked about this previously, right? Recreation makes it so that they will do recreation until they've got no recreation left to do, and then they'll do work. And then if their recreation drops below a certain amount, maybe I should just force them to do some work, at least to start off with in this base. All right, there we go. Okay, that should deal with all of this crap that's on the floor. Hey, don't eat those meals. Actually, I hope you can get them off the shelves, otherwise poor Doggo's going to starve. That might be a lot of work in hindsight for one guy, right? That's going to be a lot of work for one guy. I'm going to cut down... All of this corn, because that's an absurd amount of corn now that I think about it. Let's cut down all of this rice, and let's cut it in half. And then we use the bottom half of the rice that we just cut down to grow coffee instead. That's, that's a lot of food for one guy. I know I want to stop half of the winter. I want to give him a chance to do other jobs as well while it all grows, so we're not constantly fucking around with food. But that is that was a little bit too ambitious in hindsight. Right, so we'll turn this into coffee. Someone said check out the breakfast tea last series, because apparently it's very similar to coffee, but with no chance of uh, caffeine addiction or anything like that. And obviously no chance of psychotic addiction either, which gives it a a benefit. Ah, okay, so he actually can eat from the medicine. Wait, exotic goods traded from Robo Corporation? That's me. Hello. Are these are these people that have kind of agreed to join our settlement? I didn't even create a settlement. Completely forgot to do it in hindsight. Um, should we put down a mining settlement to start off with to help get... Uh, is research affected by this? It is. Where is a good place for research, I wonder? I guess just everywhere is good for research. Uh, certainly looks like it, huh? Let's click around in some various places, sort of see what... Oh, that one has a bonus. I don't know why. Rainforest is better for research? Okay. That's interesting. Um, yeah, this one's Rainforest here. It's got 1.25 for research. All right, so for, for the time being, then, let's go for mining. So we've got a base of 1.1. Is there anything that's better for mining, then? Uh, 0.65 modifier in the tropical rainforest. So this one, 1.1, 1.25. Okay, so we'll settle there. Caravan is sent to the location. They'll arrive in 0 0.3 days. And then we'll also put one down here as a research settlement to help our guy with some of the massive burden he's got. Now, research is five times faster because we've only got one guy, one very basic dude, no bionics or anything to do that with. However, I want most of the research to be done by the settlement. So we're not just spending time looking at a research tree. Speaking of which... Let's look at a research tree. Oh, wow. It's not quite as ridiculous as last time, but we do have a lot of other mods this time that we didn't have previously. For example, all of the what-the-hack stuff. Um, what else have we got here? 
Oh, of course, all of the uh, cybernetic... Oh, so sorry, it's called cybernet glitternet. That's it, glitternet stuff. I also have something cool that I thought would be kind of fun to test on the prisoners. There is a Borg mod, a, a Borg race continue mod there, which was which has been picked up. That allows you to make nanites. You can inject prisoners with nanites and in theory turn them into drones, which could be kind of fun. The only downside to that is if the prisoners go berserk, they might end up assimilating Robo Daddy, which would be kind of high risk, high reward. You know, the prisoners at that point wouldn't need rest, recreation, anything like that, food. They would work constantly and I think they work pretty decently as well because they are robots essentially or cyborgs. So, but the downside again comes from the fact that if they run riot, our poor boy might be assimilated. Right, how are we looking then? So, Urzdo has been set up here. I really love the new interface. Done a great job on this one. All right, you, my friend, are uh, so tithe and power obviously always set to uh, sorry, <laughs> research and power always set to tithe. That's what I meant to say. We want minus then. So let's go ahead and start assigning some of those. Um, cost per worker. Wait. Is this the research settlement? Oh, this is the research settlement. My bad, sorry. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and get ourselves some... Should we just go researchers to start off with, then? So that's going to cost us 900 silver every every cycle. I don't remember what it is in hindsight. Um, but it would save our guy a lot of time, particularly right now when he's too busy fucking around in the fields. All we've got to do is really make sure that we've got the other one set up. Oh, man, this looks so, so good, doesn't it? Wow. This is the same artist, I believe, that does the Vanilla Expanded mods as well. And I've always said that the Vanilla Expanded mods fit into the base game so perfectly. And this, this really does cement it, huh? Um, what's a plague camp? Oh, that's the opposite of what I wanted. To keep the sick and the dying. No, no, no. I want to make people sick and dying. That's the opposite of what we need there. Anyway, we'll worry about the research place uh, when, we, when we've got the other one established. I did send one, didn't I? Yeah, just about to go in. There we are. So this one is our mining camp. So this is the one where we're going to be able to turn a good amount of profit. What do we want to put down then? So, the they might have rebalanced some of the buildings as well since I last played. Uh, large apartment blocks to house local workers. Eight workers, five overmax, and 500 upkeep. So, we have to pl pay a flat 500 silver per cycle to keep this one going. But the amount of workers, if we keep this just a pure profit settlement, would definitely make up for that. Um, what's the other one? It's like migrant housing was one of the first ones I would build. Um, yes, we've still got that. Perfect. Two workers and two overmax. Now, there's kind of a soft cap and a hard cap. Just to reiterate for people who didn't see the series we played this last time. This number is the amount of workers we've got available. This is the amount of workers we can pay for before they start becoming more expensive per worker. And this is our maximum we can assign. Um, that's that's our over... That, that's, yeah, it's maximum available and then soft cap. I don't know if I described that very... Very well. But you kind of see as we go along here. Anyway, migrant housing. If we've got enough silver, I'm happy to put that here immediately so we can start turning a profit. What else have we got? Man, there's a lot more than I last played, isn't there? Another thing that's really essential for this place is going to be the quarry. So we'll, uh, not silver on the current map. Oh my god, I'm already broke. I'm never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that the other way around in hindsight. Made it so that the workers that we've already got make more money per worker. Then had gone for the housing. It doesn't really matter either way, I guess. Okay, good shit. Base is down. We've got water. We've got settlements being produced. Robo Daddy is good. How long we got? We got 1.9 days. Let's put down that trade beacon now. I've left it off for way too long. We've actually missed out on a couple of drops. We don't have microelectronics. You fool. I knew I was supposed to start on something early in this. It's by design, I should point out. Um, let's get down that research bench, and you are just going to sit there and work. You are just going to... Oh, God. Um, this is a little bit cramped, I will admit. We could put it like... Put it there. No, we can't put it there. Uh, we could put it there. And then have him work in front of the bedroom door? That's hideous. Oh, I hate it. What have I done? Reinstall the shelf? Yeah, we can. Um, we could reinstall that down here. It doesn't block the door. Unless we put it put it there. Move this one over and put the... Yeah, okay, got it. Put the, put the research bench in the center. I think that makes some more sense. Mad Gazelle. This is what I'm talking about. This is why we needed turrets to start off with. Where is it? Show, show me this. Okay, it's going to attack the traders. Nothing to worry about. Speaking of which, why don't we actually see what the traders have? Just in case we can give them something to... We got a lot of spare glitter medicine that we might never use. Oh, they've got a level 3 builder. Now, this is why I wanted to use this mod. Because the level 3 builders are very, very expensive. Logging drone assembler. What is that? Slowly fabricates logger drones using materials extracted from the air. Oh. That's madness. That's crazy. 2,500. And then we've got a tech print for beyond our understanding. Oh, okay. Um, What does that mean? I thought that the beyond your understanding... Oh my god, hang on a minute. This is added by a mod that adds essentially limitless research. So what I mean by that is there's a research added by this one uh, that is incredibly difficult to 
to get. Beyond your understanding, in this case, is uh, 250,000 points. That goes beyond Cosmic Theory, Energy Generation, Power Armor, whatever else. And it goes all the way up to this pinnacle of creation, which is 500,000 <laughs> research points. Apparently, we can't do that because we're missing a multi-analyzer. Sorry, my bad. Um, but we could just get that? There are tech prints for that? That seems kind of OP. Maybe, we, maybe we will, we'll kind of avoid doing that in the future. What the hell is that thing? We got Fire Wasp. We got blood shrimp. Those are cool. Anyway, we can't afford any of that stuff to start off with. Right, that's a little bit better. And let's also go furniture and put down a, a dining chair too, because I'm feeling generous. Why don't we also get down a little bit of power too, considering we've we've got some farms. We can kind of capitalize on that a little bit. Um, if we put down a wind turbine there, and if we put one right next to it as close as we possibly can, then we can put another small farm at the back of things there. What are we growing? Growing that there. Obviously growing that one there. Shit. Um... We'll put down another small farm at the back. Either that or we floor it over. But I think it would still be more beneficial right now just to grow some crops here. Stick down some... Do we ever grow cotton in the end? I think we did. Um, hay grass for our animal. I don't know if he can even eat it in hindsight. Fine. Potatoes. Whatever. The robot Daddy's currently working on his research bench. Or at least he's... Oh, we're out of steel. Ooh. Or at least he should be. Have we got a mining bot? Because if we've got a mining bot, there's no reason to... Uh, mining bot. Mining bot. Build a bot. Hauling bot. Robot crafter, ER bot, kitchen bot, hauling bot, cleaning bot, bollocks. We don't have a mining bot. Oh no. <laughs> well, I guess we'll get him on that one then immediately, just so that we can at least get this uh, workbench down. The global trade beacon, I just pointed, will bring in a, a decent amount of resources, but it's nothing we really want to worry about. Oh, we do have a, a builder bot can mine. Oh, okay, that's fair enough. They've left us a gift as well. Medicine times four. So the orbital trade beacon will provide. Kind of some resources that will come in handy. I believe it scales to colony wealth from what I remember. So right now it's not going to be super, super relevant. But the first raid is going to hit kind of hard. Because of course we've got no real defenses. And a lot of our wealth is in the Banometric Power Cell, the robots, etc. Wanderer joins. A herbalist named Ryan. Oh, she's also like got the same. She's got the doctor thing. She's got fast hands. Misandra's too smart. We could kill her and eat her. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like Robo Daddy hasn't got enough, uh, gone through enough yet to drive him into a psychopath. You know, he's had quite a quite a luxurious life right now. He's got his own private lab. He's got his own private robot army. He's got companionship in the form of his wolf. He's got a nice ensuite bathroom. He's got a bed. I don't even have a bed in real life. This guy's doing well for himself. I don't think he's immediately going to turn to murder and cannibalism, even though he is a cannibal. Maybe he just likes the taste, but isn't really one for murder. Banish. Be gone. Get out of here. Is that going to make him sad? Better not. Uh, hey, without, hey, without table, he's more sad about that. Okay, shit, sorry. Forgot about the most pressing war crime here. As me deciding whether or not we should butcher and eat a woman. He's more concerned that he doesn't have a table to eat her on. So the wind turbines are active. Obviously, we just got to fi finish off clearing that off our... Oh, kitchen bot can grow. Oh, this is 10 out of 10. The builder bot can mine, the kitchen bot can grow. Well, it's a kitchen bot. Of course it can grow crops. Cooking and tending to plants. That makes perfect sense. Oh, shit. Okay, that's great, because I was worried that it might take a long time to get up to electronics if my guy's going to be tending all these farms for years, but he doesn't have to worry about that so much. Great. Okay. Well, let's put down some lights. Uh, well, specifically, some batteries probably wouldn't hurt to start off with here. And then we'll put down some lights in the base. And then, as far as I'm concerned, this is pure luxury. Ah, oh, nice. Our migrant housing is down. We should really look for if there is any silver on the map, then, and just have the, have the robot do that for us. Uh, let's put down, before I forget, a wall light. What is that one? Wall lamp? Oh, it does... Look, it does two lamps on either side. If I put it in the corner, then... Oh, that's cool. So whatever wall is adjacent, it will... Oh, yeah, and look in the center there as well. Oh, that's quite a cool idea. Okay, so we'll put a couple of those down, then. We could even save on a few resources by... Min-maxing lamps? No, I'm not going to be that type of person. That's ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's the whole base lit up in no time. It's a little bit cramped, I will admit. But it's a, it's a temporary living arrangement until we've really got the colony off the ground. So let's go for... I always fall into the habit, of course, of in early series building these ridiculously kind of dense spaces, and then just slowly upgrading them. I'm just building a temporary structure that we can tear down and then build a proper factory out of instead. Right, so we are looking for... There's so many things I want to get. There's so many things. Like, animal enrichment. We've got sewage treatment. We come on. Oh, that's not too promising, is it? Oh, no. Okay, don't worry about that too much. Um, hybrid implantology. No, 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 getting distracted. What do we need? We want boring microelectronics rather than war crimes to start off with. There will be war crimes. Like I said, I feel like Robo Daddy has to go through some... Sorry, I should call him Geppetto Fingers rather than Robo Daddy, because I don't know what that voice clip is going to be used for. Uh, my man Geppetto Fingers. He, I feel like he needs to go through some things first before he... God, he's such a chad. Sorry, I was getting distracted. We need to actually do something with him first before we... You know, he needs to go through some hardships, through a couple of raids, through some raiders, 
actually watch his house be burnt down and his dog killed in front of his eyes or something before he ends up going full-blown war crimes. Thank you for the 65 silver. Much appreciated. Now, speaking of which, yeah, is there any silver? There we go. That'll pay for our quarry and our other settlement. He's not the fastest, but he's he's pretty good at his job. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, drop down mining and growing, seeing as apparently we've got robots to do that for us. And we'll focus on the research side of things. I'll put it below construction, because our guy is still the best builder on the map. And with quality builder, it means if the robot isn't as good as skilled as this guy, things just won't get built. So we'll leave him slightly better on construction. I'm in mean, a nice cold bath. Oh, wait, we've got a hot water tank. My God, I was, I was so much faster than some of our other series are. And then the second we can, there's another exotic goods trader from our faction. Second we can, we will be going for orbital trade beacons. Oh my god, they're here already. Wait, you liar. I, I remember that it was always the case that the first one... Oh, that's a bit easy. I expected more than that, to be honest. Uh, the first one always comes a little bit earlier. This is like the one that the base game reward will send you. And then the wave base will take over after that. So we've got this one to fight off. This is obviously not a problem. I have a feeling the one that comes in with the wave base will be a lot harder than this one, though. Should we just mine all the connected ores? Because our, our builder bot has nothing else to do. So we might as well have him out there with the hauling bots gathering us resources while our guy does the very, very essential research right now. Um, go over there. Compacted salt? It's comment section. Have I made that joke before? I've, I've almost certainly made that joke before, haven't I? Right, let's get uh, machinery mined up there. This has been a great start. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the progress to, to have, to have gotten in the first episode here. Like, like already cracking out along with our. Oh, right, of course, got our guys here to help us out. Um, to get microelectronics in the first episode and to get an advanced research venture would help out massively. The main thing is going to be again to offload all the research onto our colonies and then. Oh god, there's another one immediately. That's uh. That's interesting difficulty right there. Thank God we've got the turrets, otherwise we'd be screwed. And again, these sentry turrets are not great. They're quite inaccurate. Actually, I should really reinstall that one a little bit more to... Hang on, if we move this one to, like, here, just so that it, it matches up the other... So, so that the, the entire base, they can't just sneak through. Otherwise, if they were clever enough, they could just come right up here and burn our crops without the turrets even seeing them. So we'll get that one moved in a second. But yeah, I want to make it so that the uh, so that we can see, obviously, the new features of the Empire's mod. More importantly, so that those guys can do what we want. And they've already got 500. So we're 500 silver down. We're going to be able to... No, we're not going to be able to pay for that. That's total net profit, you fool. I should really stop them. Let's go auto-resolve, actually. I should really stop them researching. Or at least take some workers off of research until we can afford to pay them. Because I don't want to go a little bit... I don't, I don't want to be angry at us. Right, so let's go for... And how much was this one making for the timing? 401. And we could probably afford to put in a couple of others now. We're looking at diminishing returns past the 10th worker. Yeah, so 438. Let's go back to this one and spend 438 on research. 378. That'll do it. Sorry, our first raider turned up with a fucking assault rifle. My god. <laughs> if these guys weren't here and the turrets were... If the turrets got unlucky, we could have been screwed. But it's done already. Wow, that was, that was quite fast. Aw. Oh. What a nice scene. Let's leave it there. That's a nice scene to end things on. Thank you all for watching the adventures of Chad Geppetto and his robot army. Hope you like this idea. Again, if you've got any suggestions you want to throw in early on in the series where we can make a lot of changes, if you happen to miss out on the RimWorld uh, Discord discussion or anything like that, throw them my way. Because we've got a couple of episodes before we really settle into the series anyway. So I can make some adjustments as we go along here. But I'm pretty excited to see how a one-man factory playthrough will go. And again, end goal really is to build that, that nuclear platform that I'm so interested in. I don't know why I'm so enamored with that. I just saw it. Okay, I just saw it on the options menu as a possibility, so I feel like I owe it to myself and to this game. Thank you to Darth Hawk, Pelvis Presley, Scared Blueberry, Paul, Huey Longdong, Facunda Vasquez, Amethyst Corona, Chris, Gwen S, Roll2D1 Games, Vacuous Backers, DKO, Leo, Boop, and Dante Mordecai for their support over at the insane tier levels on Patreon. To all patrons, if you guys want a robot named after you, an animal named after you, a settlement named after you, throw me your preferences in Discord, RimWorld, messaging channels, wherever. Look, wherever you can find it, throw them at me. And I will, uh, I'll make sure that is added onto the list for you. Especially those last series who got their names added and then obviously it ended up being a complete dumpster fire of a show. Thank you as well. Goes out to Tiger Rifter, Haji Dumar, Jacob Wolfie, Joseph Beer, Cogzell, Cass, Alex Bogard, William H, Knight Rouge, Grey, Silent Sentinel, Erotha, Justin Plot, Pantherpill, Donald, I am Sagatair, and everyone else at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon as well. Thank you guys for your support.